My name is Melissa with Gullion Homestead and welcome to my channel where I focus on homesteading skills, self-sufficiency, and resilience. Today, I'm planning my 2025 garden. I'm near my pantry and I wanted to share with you a little bit about what we did in the garden this year and what we're going to do next year. As I've shared on my channel before, I have three gardens, a three by 12, five by 12, and another five by 12. And I have an arch trellis between my two five by 12 gardens. I'm sure most people are tired of hearing about my three gardens that I talk about here on here all the time, but I wanted to share that because we live in a neighborhood and we have an HOA, we have very limited space on gardening. And so as much as I would like to have eight or 10 gardens, because I absolutely would do that. I love to garden. I love to see things grow. I love to eat the foods that we are growing here in our, in our little yard. I love it. It's just something that I just feel really good about. I know that we're not putting any pesticides on our foods and we're eating some really good organic foods right here that we grow in our backyard. However, I don't have the space to put in a lot of stuff in my garden. And this year I pushed the limit. I would say I pushed the limit pretty, pretty tightly in my garden and it did not produce in some areas. It didn't produce the way I was hoping to. So I may have pushed it a little bit too far. So I have shared with you guys before that we grew green beans and wax beans, and I have in my pantry here a well-stocked pantry for the 2024 20, to 2025 season, the winter season. And this whole top right here is full of green beans, plus we have freezer beans as well, plus I have some green beans and another cabinet in the kitchen because I ran out of room in here. So we have a good two years worth of green beans and that would include, now it's just two of us in our house. So for just Steve and I, you know, we'll eat a can, a jar of green beans for a meal and have leftovers typically for lunch the next day. But that includes two holidays that I normally use for the green beans. And then sometimes I'll actually take them to a potluck that we go to for a hayride in the fall. So that is taking a lot of green beans and making them for a lot of people like Thanksgiving. And then we still have some leftovers. So we started off the year with, um, I think we started off the year with like 19 jars. And I think I've got like 43 jars now. Plus we've got a whole bunch of fresh frozen green beans in the freezer. So I'm good with green beans for the next two years. So this is where I'm going with this is that with the garden moving forward, I'm going to do my best at growing things that we can preserve for two years at a time. And a perfect example would be green beans. We had an arch trellis. We had two five foot sections that of, let me see, it was like a, five five by one foot section. So it was like one foot wide of green beans, but five foot deep or one foot deep, five foot wide on both sides. We actually had like 10 feet of green beans growing, but we grew pole beans over the arch. And so we got a ton, a ton, ton of beans. And I have so many seeds um, left over from that. We saved the seeds from that. I'm also going to this winter and maybe next spring as well is use some of those extra seeds to grow some sprouts for sandwiches and that kind of thing. So we're not done using the seeds. We're going to reuse them in some other ways. So we have enough beans. I think we're going to be good next year. I love to eat fresh beans. If I chose to grow, grow some beans, I probably would grow just a couple of plants to give us some fresh eating throughout the summer. But I'm thinking we don't need any green beans next year. So I'm going to work on putting some different things in the garden that actually can last us for the 25, 2025, 2026 gardening year or, or preserving year. The other thing that we had a really good luck with this year was we had a really good, um, probably have a two year supply of loofah sponges. 
And although I want to do a loofah video for you guys so bad, the loofah just really are not quite ready. I pulled this loofah this morning because, and a seed just fell out, because it really, it was crunchy. It really looked like it was ready to be harvested. And you can see there's an actual sponge there. So that's great, but it's like almost too wet for me to peel. So I have this sitting out in the sun. I'm gonna let it dry out a little bit more and see if I can get that to peel a little bit easier. But we have, uh, this morning I counted 16 loofah out there on the plant. Now I have probably about four of them that are pretty small. I'm not sure we'll make it for the rest of the season. Cause we probably, if we're lucky, our growing season actually is only about two more weeks. And about two weeks is typically when we get our last frost. So if we're lucky and we get a full another four weeks of growing, maybe we'll get those four loofah, but we're probably gonna be more like 10 or 12 loofah that we're pulling off the plant. But most of them are this size. And so you can see, I mean, I'm thinking I'll probably get five or six sponges out of this. So we're looking at maybe 50 sponges. That should last us two years. I just want sponges for the kitchen and then a few for our shower. I'm probably gonna divide those. I'm hoping 50 sponges will last us two years. That's what my thought is, is two years, they'll last for two years. So not gonna grow any more leaf in next year. That was a two year, this was a two year goal. This was a goal is to grow enough loofah for two years. I think I got to that. Uh, peppers. Peppers, we did better in our peppers this year, but I still didn't get as many peppers as I would like. So my goal next year is to grow a two years worth of peppers. And when I say that, this is why. I like to can peppers. So I have all kinds of peppers in here canned. Cowboy candy is one of my favorite things. I made bean burritos or beef burritos a couple nights ago with some black beans that we had canned and my leftover cowboy candy from vacation. And it was so delicious. It just had a little bit of sweetness at the end of like with each bite, it was so great. But cowboy candy is awesome. It's also known as uh, candied jalapenos and I think there's another name for it, cowboy caviar. So great thing. I like, I like to have a lot of this on my shelf at all times. I have enough probably to last us until next season. But my goal would be next year to grow, I think I'm gonna go a three foot by 12 foot row. So three foot, like a real solid long 12 foot row of peppers, mostly jalapenos, maybe some red chilies as well because I did grow some red chilies this year and have them drying over by the fireplace so I can use that for, um, for some chili and stuff this winter. But I'm gonna try to grow as many jalapenos as I can and we will, We'll make some cowboy candy, and then somewhere in here I've got some, oh, I just have some canned chilies, which are great for, I just have some canned chilies. I just take my hot peppers and can them. These were from 2022. I still have a couple of jars of these left over, but the plan would be to have enough peppers that we could freeze peppers as well as canned peppers next year so that we have enough for two years. So in saying that, I last year had purchased potatoes after our we ate pretty much all the potatoes that we had grown. So I purchased potatoes from a local farmer and I believe I bought two like big boxes if I remember right and they started to go south in December, and I've shared this on this channel before. So we blanched them and cut them up, put them in the freezer, we're still working off of those. So it's October, we're still working off what we froze last December, and I purchased that probably last October from him. So my goal is to get through those potatoes, which I'm thinking will be through those potatoes by December, so we'll have no potatoes, but we have some other, um, got some other things. I've got some butternut squash, acorn squash, and spaghetti squash that I just got from a local farmer down the street. So we're good in that area. We'll at least have something that we can actually fill a low carb item that would replace the potatoes. Even though potatoes aren't low carb, we still like potatoes because they are 
a good source of vitamins um, and nutrients for us. So we do eat potatoes about once a week. So I am going to next year plan a plant, an entire, I'm taking an entire garden, which is kind of freaking me out a little bit, but I think it's gonna be fine. A five by 12 garden of all potatoes. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do, I might do a fingling potato and like a baker style potato. And my goal with that would be to grow two years worth of potatoes and at the end of the season, like at the end of next year, let's see, the, or the spring, the following spring, if we still have potatoes left over, I'll blanch them, freeze them, and then I'll keep those in the freezer and work off those for another year. That's my thought. I'm gonna see if that works. Um, if the potatoes come out soon enough that I can throw carrots in after the potatoes next year, that would be the next goal I would have for that garden. But basically that garden is gonna be full of potatoes. I'm gonna plant them around St. Patrick's Day because that's what we do here in Indiana. And they will probably not be pulled until July or August. So if I'm lucky, I could maybe get a whole garden full of carrots as well. And then we would have potatoes and carrots for next winter. So that'd be great. Um, then the other thing I'm gonna do with my garden is the other garden. The other five by 12 garden is gonna have garlic through the middle. When the garlic comes out, the peppers are gonna go good, are gonna be planted. Ugh. The pepper, peppers will be planted right in the middle later in the summer, somewhere like probably late June, early July. And I know peppers like them a lot warmer and I feel like every time I plant them around Mother's Day, they don't do as well. I planted some additional peppers this year in July and those peppers have done fabulous. So I'm gonna wait and plant them later in the year. I'm gonna start them in the grow room and then just move later in the season and putting those into the ground and then grow those all the way to the end of the season. So the only other thing that we're gonna grow out there in the garden, in the, in the actual vegetable garden would be tomatoes. I have a 12 foot row, I'm going to grow tomatoes. And then on the other side, I have about six foot that I'm gonna grow. So I'll have 18 feet of tomatoes. We tried that this year. I planted them too close together, I think. Um, we did use a string trellis. I used some advice off of some YouTube videos and online sources that I found about growing them 12 inches apart. I won't do that again because they got blight for the first time and because they were so close. I had them all cleaned up, had a lot of airflow through them, but we had a lot of rain early in the season and they got blight, they were touching each other and I lost all of my tomato plants but two. I had eight or nine tomato, nine tomato plants, I lost seven of them. So that was not successful for me at all this year. So I am going to do a couple things next year. I'm going to grow a black creme and then I put all of my eggs in one basket. I did all the rest of them were San Marzano. I won't do that again. I think what I'll do is a couple San Marzano, a black creme, and then maybe pick a couple of other paste type tomatoes that we can actually use for canning. My goal would be to can then two years worth of tomatoes. Now, I will tell you the year before that, I did have two years worth of tomatoes because I had all kinds of tomatoes from last season that we had not used still in the pantry. I pulled those out made some salsa and kind of incorporated those with some of the tomatoes I got out of the garden for stuff for the 2024, 2025 preserving season. So I do think that if I can get this many tomatoes to stay next year, we will have two years worth of tomatoes. So if that happens, then the following year, we will not grow potatoes, we will not grow peppers, and we will not grow tomatoes. We will actually grow completely different things in the garden and so that is where I'm going with the 2025 garden season. So it's important to start looking at that stuff now because if you want garlic, this is the time of year to plant your garlic. And if you want potatoes, you are going to need to order your potatoes probably around January or February so you can get them in the garden in February or March. Depending on where you live, some places, some people put theirs in the garden in February and some put them in in March. So let's take a quick little garden or a quick little pantry tour to see where we're at right now with the pantry. 
So I've shared a little bit about this pantry. I've showed this pantry before. It's my favorite pantry. I love it. If I could have a pantry like this in like four or five times the size would be much better for me because I use every nook and cranny in my house. And towards the Christmas, like probably towards the end of the year, I'll do another pantry tour because the pantry I'm gonna show you out there is a hot mess. I might even do a pantry, I might even do a video on getting that thing organized. I've tried to organize it, but I'll share it with you in just a minute. It's just a hot mess, that's all I can say. So, talked about our green beans. Over here, we've got some canned meats that we're still working off of from last year. That is from June of last year. And I will honestly plan on doing, when the winter time is when I do most of my canning of my meats, and I will be doing canning videos for you in the winter time once we get going on canning some chicken and some pork and some beef that we need to get out of the freezer to make room for the next cow that we have butchered. So that is something I will be doing. Plus I like to have canned meats on the shelf because if Steve and I have got plans or have something going on, it's just such an easy meal. I can throw away, throw together a pulled pork dinner, a pulled pork sandwich, I can do um, beef uh, tacos really quick, chicken tacos. If I have cooked chicken or canned chicken, I can throw it on a salad. It's just so fabulous that I don't have to think about what we're um, making that night if I'm in a hurry. I work a full-time job, we own a winery, so this is a great thing for us. And then the other thing is too, is I feel like the meat is so much more tender because I pressure can it. It's pressure cooked in a jar, so it's fabulous. So. We'll do videos later in the season on that. On this shelf, I've got some fudge, that uh, hot fudge for ice cream for the grandkids. I've got some jam, uh, rosemary red wine fig jam that's fabulous. I make this every year. It's great for an adult peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I love it. And then I also have some strawberry concentrate here for kombucha that we're gonna do later in the year as well have some more jam here. And so you can see I have cowboy candy up here and cowboy candy down there. I ran out of room down there after I labeled. And so we have some more up here, but I'm working on trying to go through this. We've got like two rows of that, I think. I'm working on going through this first so that that can stay full down there and I can kind of move other things into here. These are beans. I will probably do a video on dry canning beans later in this year too, because we're working through our beans right now. And this is soup season. So I use these beans to make chilies or just a side dish in the winter time. Great for tacos as well, taco salad, something like that. Yesterday, I, or a couple days ago, I made a soup and I used two jars of the black beans because these were canned last June and that was the first time I canned them. I love having them on the shelf. Anything that you can can, or anything that you see at the grocery store, you can can. And that's what I try to remember, is I don't want to buy things at the grocery store, so I have a ton of dry beans, and when I need them, I just can them up, and then I've got them on the shelf to be used. Um, pizza sauce here, this is from some of our tomatoes that we had out of the garden. I've got some pickles. I. I bought pickles. I'm not going to tell you where I bought them from, but I bought the um, cucumbers, the pickling cucumbers from a source that I buy a lot of things from, and they were pretty disappointing when I got them. But I went ahead and canned them, and I feel like because they weren't really, they were they were pretty wimpy, they did not can so well. They're fine for a sandwich, but they're not really good for just like grabbing and eating a pickle the way I would normally do that. But I'll still keep them because they're a good source to have on our shelf just to kind of add as a garnish. Um, soups, now all that I will do this this winter, quite often when I am making a soup, I will double, triple, or quadruple the batch. I actually have a video coming out pretty soon for a cheeseburger soup that I made. And then we froze a bunch of it in the freezer and that is just, fabulous because you can just grab it and take it for lunch or grab it for dinner and we've got a meal already made. I often do this. So this is our chicken enchilada soup that I made and this was October of last year. We still have some of it left. Steve quite often takes one of these to work and then he can eat off of this for like three or four days. Um, it's a pretty hearty soup too and so I'll try to make 
soups. Once I make that like four times the soup recipe, then I'll can that. If it's a cannibal soup, I'll can it and then we'll have it on the shelf for, um, for lunches. Now, if it's not a cannibal soup, and that would be something that would have like dairy products like cream, milk, cheese, anything like that, you cannot can that safely. So that would have to go in the freezer, but it's a real easy pull it out. And it, if you pull it out around seven or eight in the morning, it's normally thawed out enough by noon for lunch. Got some hot sauces down here. Let's see if you guys can see this. Some hot sauces down here. Here is one of our favorite things. This, especially in the winter time, it's pickled cauliflower. It's cauliflower and carrots and some mustard seed. It is so delicious. It's really great because it just, it tastes so fresh. I buy my cauliflower from a grower, a uh, farmer down the street and I bulk order my cauliflower. So we've got some purple, here's some purple cauliflower over here we bought from, from them and it just gives this great purple like liquid in your, it's just fabulous, yeah. So I have a lot of that, That'll, that we probably have about two years worth. I probably will not have to buy any of that next year to make. This is the first year I've made this much. I made some last year, Steve really liked it and so it's on our shelf now for a staple. Um, if we move over here, I've got some um, some more meats. This is actually cowboy candy broth. I saved in case I got more cow or in case I got more um, jalapenos out of the garden. I canned this up and was going to reuse it, but now my thought is I'm just going to save it for like an extra seasoning if we want to add it to our taco meat or something. That's probably what I'm going to do, or to use that up. And so I'm just going to keep it on the shelf for right now. I've got two different types of applesauce. We don't eat applesauce a lot around here, but my grandkids love it. And recently I've been trying to add more fruit to my diet and I don't put sugar in my, well, I should back that up. One of my applesauces I don't put sugar in and the other one I do. So I've got two different types. I just have a cinnamon applesauce and the natural occurring sugars and you add the cinnamon to it. So it tastes really great. And if I did put any sugar in it, I don't think I did. It was very low sugar. And then I also made a, let's see. This actually should not have a lid on it. I took this on vacation and we ended up not eating it. I took it just in case we wanted something, um, something sweet, but it is apple butter applesauce. So it's the apple butter recipe. I just don't like cook it all the way down to get it real thick to pour apple butter and just made it applesauce it's so good. It has cloves and cinnamon and sugar in it. It's really, really good. So it's a little bit higher in sugar, but it's really delicious. And then we have some apple fig chutney. There's another one that has a ring on it because I took that on vacation as well for a recipe I was going to make and then we ended up not using it. This I actually canned up the end of last year. I had some figs left over and then someone donated it a bags and bags of apples and I didn't really have anything to do with it, so I made some apple fig chutney. This is really good on pork chops and chicken, and we're probably gonna, this is probably a couple years worth of that for us because it's just something I forget I have and I don't use as well. Then we've got corn, we've got corn here, we've got corn behind the camera, and then we've got corn over on a shelf, over in the cabinet. We've got lots of corn, we canned this corn last year. Moving forward, I will only freeze corn. I actually think that it tastes much better frozen but we are working through eating this corn. We tried to do a year's worth of corn and apparently we can two years worth of corn. Did not realize that that was going to, we didn't realize that we wouldn't eat that much. Last year, my goal was to try to get a year's worth of food in our pantry. And uh, the year before that, I was just really canning and gardening and, you know, stocking the, stocking the shelves, but not really super focused on a year's worth of food. But last year I started to get very focused on having a year's worth of food and this is where the corn came in. So I tried to calculate in my brain how often we eat corn or how often we would eat corn. Well, I kind of failed in that area because I way over, I thought maybe we would eat corn like once a week. My thought is we might eat like a quart of corn once a week. And um, something else I took on vacation that we didn't eat. <laughs> And well, we ended up not eating corn, like maybe we eat corn like once every three to four weeks, just because we have so many options. 
So I way overdid it on the corn next year. Hopefully we'll be through this corn next year. If not, canned foods will last for years. Freezer foods will not last for years. So if we don't make it through the corn next year and we have it for another year, then I'll just wait and freeze corn later down the road when actually we run out. But I canned 52 pint jars of corn it equals 52 pints of corn because I thought we would eat it once a week. That hasn't happened and that was canned last um, July. So July, August, that's like 15 months ago. So 15 months ago and we still have at least half of what we can. So we have plenty of that as well. So then I've got some salsas down here. We're big salsa eaters in this house. I can't go out the winter without salsa, so I've got salsa. And then we've got some tomato products down there. We have some enchilada and some tomatillo and some tomato sauce from last year that I canned and made. And we still have some tom tomatillo sauce now too. So this is really moving towards the 2024, 2025 preserving season. This is just fabulous that we have all these things Hand and that we're building on this all the time. I am working through trying to use as much of it as I can, but with just two of us in the house, honestly, a lot of times I'm giving this away. So it's a great gift to give to your friends as well because people love canned goods. They just love it. They love the fact that you take the time to can it and that you take the time to preserve it or that you take the time to grow it and you take the time to preserve it. So let's take a quick sneak peek at the big pantry that is kind of a hot mess right now. All right, guys, I'm not kidding. This pantry needs some major, major work. So let's see if I can get the light to turn on in here. We have a kind of like a motion light in here. So I worked on doing these great little, um, I don't know if you can see those or not. Yeah, stickers and labels and labeled everything. The problem is, is that I continue to get things from Azure Standard that I can't seem to fit in here. So right now I've got stuff on the floor. I have, I mean, literally, you know, just, I, I picked up my Azure Standard order yesterday and I'm just packed full. I've got stuff in here. I mean, I've got, we've got broth down in here. We have fruit right in here. I've got beans. I just, I've got stuff pretty much. Um, it's fully packed as you can see, but it's not very organized and it's really kind of getting on my nerves. So the plan would be to work on this garden or this pantry and try to get it organized before Thanksgiving for sure, but it's honestly just not on the, it's just not on the list of things to do this week because I got enough going on. Okay, that's all I have for today. It's kind of an eventful video, I know. I'm happy that I'm starting to think about next year's garden. I mean, it's October. It, every time it's harvest season, I'm already thinking about what I'm gonna do next year. I'm already thinking about what it is that we need to have in our pantry. What do we need to have for some food security in our home? If you're not one that actually is looking at food security, I would highly suggest that you do that. And specifically because we just had the big hurricane that hit and it hit South Carolina and those people, obviously they lost their homes and so their food probably went with that. But at, in our area, we get tornadoes and there are also, is always a concern that one of us might lose our jobs or get sick. And so having a pantry like this is a security blanket for us. It keeps us, it's like a savings account in our home that just make sure that we can eat, our children can eat, and our grandchildren can eat. So we hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. Bye.